So you feel like giving up and I'm here to say to you, don't do it. Hang on a little longer. And you say to me, but Angie, you do not know my age. I'm over 85. I'm 90 years old. I'm 22 years old. I'm under 30. But I'm saying to you, as long as there's breath in those lungs of yours, there is more for you to do. There's an assignment. Yes, you feel like the weight of the entire world is on your shoulder. But what you're going through is for a season and your age does not matter. I remember the day and that feeling of discouragement when that first surgery John looked at me and he said after a major car accident we are suffering from some broken bones he said I don't know if we could help you your condition is serious we don't know if you could walk again for me walking and movement meant everything but one thing that surgeon did not know or I did not know was that some years later my life involved a lot of movement going to Africa going to North America going to South America going to Europe attending to people attending to needs my assignment was not done but the one thing I did not do was to give up I did not listen to negative voices I put my support in the creator I had the, that can do shall do will do mindset and the support of some amazing people I'm gonna share with you in this video three secrets or three habits that have to be cultivated for you to pull through during those moments of crises and distress stay tuned <laughs> Marie and I'm so grateful that you chose to click on this video if this is your first time checking out my channel I really appreciate you and if you are a return subscriber God bless you I really appreciate you having us together to share our thoughts here now I don't know your specific circumstances but what I do believe is that there must be a very good reason why you chose to click on this video I have gone through various challenges in my life and over time I've learned that these three things, these three habits really work. Number one, the intentional control of my thoughts, my mindset, it works every time. Here are some of the things that I know. The greater the difficulties or challenges you have or you face right now or previously, the more significant the impact you're supposed to make later. I believe this. Your experiences are what will set you apart and enable you to impact your world in the most powerful way. So the nature of the challenges provide clues concerning your assignment. Trust me on this. There's so many examples across the world. Think about all the people who have had great success. And when you look back, you'll see that they went through stuff that caused them, that helped them to be able to give and do the things they do in the present. So if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed at this time, you're in the right place. You clicked on the right video. I want you to stay with me to the end. I'm encouraging you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it if you wish. Listen, most battles that are won are won first in the mind. So what is mindset? Mindset refers to the set of attitudes, beliefs, and thoughts that shape how we perceive and respond to different situations. Okay, It influences our behaviors, our decisions, and our overall outlook on life. The 2024 Olympics open in France, in Paris, France. Have you ever observed the athletes? I love athletics. Listen, the athletes are in it to win it. Some of them dealt with injuries, setbacks, and other challenges, but they worked on the issues and continued to press ahead. That's the winner's mindset. Our mindset acts as a filter through which we interpret experiences. All right, so a positive mindset, can help us see challenges as opportunities for growth while a negative mindset may lead us to view them as insurmountable obstacles this perspective directly impacts our ability to cope with distress it is growth oriented and does not focus on decline it is positive and does not focus on the negative occurrences regardless of how difficult things may appear it is resilient and does not give up. So how do we cultivate this mindset? First of all, being thankful for everything we have rather than focusing on what we do not have at a fleeting moment in time. Developing the discipline and choosing to replace negative thoughts with positive, realistic ones. Okay, setting realistic goals and going after them. Surrounding ourselves with positivity, positive and encouraging supportive people and engaging in self-care. Things that will promote good habits that help us physically, emotionally, spiritually and mentally. Mindset. 
That's very important. Number two is support. And in terms of support, the first one, first and foremost, I believe we must have God, the supreme power to be there with us, someone we can call on or faith where we know that, look, I'm going through this, I'm going through it temporarily, and God is on my side. He allowed me to live for a reason. So for example, after a major car accident, broken bones, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have always been so active. Now I am laid up on my back, can't move. I was never used to that because I was always someone on the go, going to the gym, going to work, taking care of my family, always constantly busy on the move all the time. Now I was laid up. Now I'm being told, hey, you know, we don't know. This is a serious case. You've been hurt in various ways and we don't know how we're going to fix this, but we're going to do our best. I had to say, God, I know and I believe that you have my interest at heart. And it turns out that based on my prayer, my faith, my positive approach, it worked out for me. And over time, yes, it did take time, but I also had to be patient and trust God that he would bring me through. Likewise with you, friends, God will bring you through. You have to believe that. In terms of support, yourself, yourself, self-care, taking care of yourself even during those moments where it's challenging. Never give up and throw in the towel concerning you. So I, even when I'm down on my back, even when I'm flat on my back, even when, when things are low for me, I take care of myself. After that car accident, I had a lot of visitors, people who came to the hospital to see me, people who called, people who visited at home after I was discharged. And the voices were largely negative. There were some positive, and this is what you're going to face in your own life as well, your own situations, depending on what you're going through. So there was a loved one, may her soul rest in peace, God bless her. She meant well, she loved me, but she was so negative, guys. Every word from her mouth had been negative and I could not have it. I had to be thinking about how I'm going to heal, how I'm going to rehabilitate, getting myself back together. I couldn't afford to take on any form of negativity. So I dismissed all of that and kept pushing through. I listened to the positive people, people who said, yes, you can do this. People who referred me to the Bible and scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, all of that. My prayer time, my connection with God, it mattered so much. This is so very important. Now I'll tell you this, during my journey after that accident, I was on crutches for 11 months and the first surgeon was saying he had to do another surgery because he was not seeing the results he expected. So for almost an entire year, I was not able to walk. I could not put my right leg on the ground, no weight on that leg and a whole year pretty much of therapy. So. When he said he wanted to operate again, I said, no, I want to get a second opinion. And that's when I flew to the U.S. from Jamaica, looked up for the, one of the top three surgeons in New York. I said, I'm going to, my, I'm still young. I'm going to work on this. I need to be able to walk. I need my mobility. That surgeon was, was just exactly what the doctor ordered, what God needed, what I needed. He looked at me and he said, you know what, in you, I see youth. You are still young. I see vitality. I see positivity. When he examined me from the x-rays, he said, I see health in the bones. I see blood and cells and whatever. I'm not a biologist, but he had a different perspective. And the other thing he had was that he had seen cases like mine and worse than mine and had been able to have positive results. Guys, I'm telling you something. What I could not do for an entire year after that second surgery, Within a matter of weeks, about six weeks, I was able to start doing it. And my rehabilitation speeded up after that. I did another six or so months on crutches and then moved on gradually from a crutches to a walker to a cane and then to be able to drive again. It was a process, but there was growth, there was health, there were changes after I did that second surgery. Number three, remaining physically active. Now, in my case, when I had that car accident, you may say, well, how could you be physically active? Let me tell you something. From day one, they have a physical therapist who comes in there to help you to get moving. And even when I was only able to be moving my, my toes, even if it's my toes or just exercising those muscles, it's important that we keep our body going. 
Friends, actually it may seem funny now, but while I was lying there unable to move my right leg, I realized I could still move my hands and other parts of my body. I did not go to sleep without fixing my hair and the next morning each day I got up, I used my hands and a mirror to fix my hair so that I look proper. So when people came to visit me at the hospital, even though my right leg could not move, the rest of me was pleasant and I stayed happy. My process involved a third corrective surgery and again, the third surgeon was very positive. He talked about my youth, vitality and positivity and we can do this. I have done so much better now after what could have been something more serious. What could have taken my life if I had given up in the beginning. So this is what I say to you, don't ever give up. Don't give up on you, don't give up on God and don't give up on the positive support. One of the things that kept happening uh, after the car accident, while I was there on my back, unable to move, but that I kept having these dreams. I kept seeing myself running upstairs, running upstairs. The dreams felt real. And then I woke up only to find out that, oh no, I'm on my back. My right leg is in stirrup up there. Can't move, can't lie on my left or my right or my stomach. I just had to lay flat on my back until the doctor told me that, no, you could go on your left side or, whichever side so it was an experience but I kept dreaming about running up those stairs looking back I think those were prophetic dreams because years later when I moved to New York and started working in Wall Street in Manhattan there was a time when I was somewhere in New York in the city and I was literally running up some stairs and immediately I'm, I kid you not guys immediately I remember the dream because the color of the stairs the place everything was just as it was in that dream and I said oh my gosh look at that so I believe the running up the stairs had to do with something that was gonna come in the future but in addition to that the running upstairs also had to do with my life because my life involved movement and flying and going to Ghana and South Africa and Ecuador and Peru and Argentina and Brazil and many other places all of this happened after the accident and the broken bones so i would say to you if you have been going through stuff if life has been has thrown you some curved balls life has thrown you some challenges do not give up hang in there listen to me do these three things consider these three things they're very important and you are going to pull through as long as you're still alive there's something more for you to do for you to accomplish it might be for your grandchildren even great grandchildren your parents your friends yourself but there's more for you to do find out what it is that you're here to do and do it and i wish you all the best you guys i wish you all the best i thank you so much for staying with me to the end of this video if you have not yet subscribed you know what to do go ahead and like this video subscribe to this channel check out my other videos and stay in touch hit that notification bell so that each time i post new content you'll be the first Thanks again for spending this time with me. This is Angie Marie and I'll see you soon in the next video. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day.